We're paddling out on the Wakaiva River. This is a spring run, and, and about a mile ahead, there's a beautiful cave underwater where this, what happened? You saw a fish? Well, we're gonna catch some fish later. We're paddling up to this cave and a spring where we're gonna hold our breath and go down underwater and shoot some underwater photos. You don't have to do crazy stuff to learn from this video, but you are gonna get useful photography tips and tricks no matter what you're shooting. Because you're gonna be riding here, this is gonna be your home, shooting video here, and I'm gonna be shooting stills with this GoPro. You don't wanna get much closer than this to the gator. This really is pushing the limits. I mean, that's, this is a dinosaur. He's got 80 teeth. He knows how to use them, but this is his home. This is his territory, and so we're going to move on. That's beautiful. Different iterations of that animal have been out here for almost 200 million years. The T-Rex was in North America 60 million years ago, and that gator, he's still here. So he's doing something right, he or she. And, uh, oh, this is a little creature we can get a little bit closer to. There's a yellow-bellied slider turtle, a big adult, and he's really doing something right to be able to avoid those gators, because the gators, I mean, then that's exactly what he's doing right. He runs away at the first moment that he thinks there's a problem. That's awesome. The canoe makes a really strong foreground element here, so you can actually use this to get landscape shots. So when I do landscape photos, I want something interesting in the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. You need three distinct elements. Um, the foreground really anchors the photo, so that canoe is perfect. Unfortunately, no matter where you go in wilderness, there's always litter, and uh, we just spotted a, a white claw can right here. We're gonna get it. There's some really pretty logs under here, and it's gonna make a good fishing spot, but also might make a cool place to take a picture. So just from the side of the canoe, I'm gonna try and dunk it and see what happens here. The uh, head of the spring is just over there. This is a nice big cave. You can swim inside. Tied up the canoe. It's time to jump in. And by the way, I have the GoPro tethered. I got this retracting tether, which really helps. So. And into this beautiful alien world that I just can't get enough of. <laughs> There's so many interesting photos to be taken down here. Uh, I got another yellow-bellied slider turtle. You gotta be quick with these guys. Because as soon as you rack your first photo, they hide in their shell. And they don't come out until you leave. <laughs> so, nothing more to do than say goodbye to that little friend. Taking a big gulp of air here and swimming down into the cave. It's uh, a little over 20 feet deep. And this limestone makes such interesting photographs. This crevasse here, the current pushes you through that crevasse. This is a spring, so there's water coming up like millions of gallons per hour. And it'll push you right through that little crevasse at, at pretty great speed. So you, you have to wedge yourself in if you want to take a picture. And I like the depth here. You got the moss in the foreground and the crevasse in the background. You want those distinct elements in your landscape photos. I really like this rock sitting at the far end of the crevasse here. So uh, I'm swimming up current. I have to really wedge myself in to take a photo to get stable. And there's this person in the upper side of the screen and I hid him behind the rock purposefully because you want to disclude distracting elements. If it's not part of the storytelling of the image, you can disclude it either by hiding the person behind a rock or moving something around in your scene, physically picking something up and moving it or using Photoshop to delete something in the scene. That's okay to do sometimes. Again, just down into the abyss. It just makes such a cool photo. And sometimes you want to include the bystanders. I saw this guy peering over the cliff and I said, okay, he might make a, a cool addition to the shot. So I swam down really quickly, took a photo up at him. And I love the bubble in the foreground. That really makes the shot. It, these foreground elements anchor the image and you really want to try to include them. The bubble was an accident to, uh, to be honest though. I'm free diving here. I also do scuba diving. Um, I'm certified. I've been doing it since I was 10 years old. Uh, you don't want to do this without training, but just a, a tip for this kind of stuff. You, instead of swimming, you can actually grab onto the rocks and pull yourself down. It keeps your heart rate down so you can use the air in your lungs a little more efficiently. Uh, so you can get photos like that, peering through that crevasse a little bit deeper. You know, shake up the photo and just pick which one, which one you like best later on. 
the tourists pose for me here. <laughs> it's just a complete stranger. Uh, and, you know, if he wants his photo taken, that's totally cool. Let's do it. It might end up being a Perlitzer Prize winning photo or just a dude waving at the camera. <laughs> and the sun comes out. You can see how much of a difference that makes. Um, get the light rays and a very photogenic swimmer to include in the photo. Uh, in this case, I was just kind of hanging out at the top of the crevasse waiting for people to swim through. You, you kind of just line up a neat photo and wait for something to happen. It's called decisive moment photography. It's mostly used in street photography, but it also works underwater in a cave. <laughs> Peering up into that blue sky. And I thought, okay, maybe let me add something to the foreground. So I put my fins in there to add a little more foreground interest. It can't hurt, you know? I loved the, the light rays here and the, and the guy going from rock to rock walking across. Pulling myself down, trying to keep my heart rate down, so instead of swimming, I'm, I'm doing this reverse rock climbing. <laughs> and uh, this is one of my favorite photos of the crevasse. I backed off a little bit and got more of the mouth of the, of the little crevice in the photo. And with those light rays after the sun came out, it just makes such a strong image. Letting the current push me back up. Now this is setting up for what turned out to be my favorite image. You should tell me what your favorite image is from the shoot, because this is all subjective. I mean, this is art. Who am I to say which one's the best? Who am I to say that any of them are good? <laughs> it's all up to you. This is, this is your world. It's your art. When you have somebody this relaxed in the water, it really helps. I have plenty of time to compose here. That is my favorite image by far. And one last attempt at that crevasse photo. And uh, I shot it from between a couple of rocks. Uh, that moss with the sun shining on it makes such a good anchor for the foreground. There's one other little cave off to the side. Uh, I was looking for photos down here, but instead of finding a picture, I found Placostomus catfish. Unfortunately, this is an invasive species, and they get big. One last trip through the big cave. No pictures this time, just enjoying the, the beauty of this strange alien world. Every time I finish this one, with one of these dives, I, I feel a sense of exaltation, like I've just peeked into an alien world that, that few people get to see. I just love it down there. Whew, just about to get changed out after that. Paddle back home. That was so rad. What a beautiful place. Think we got a lot of good photos. One last photo here of this beautiful sunset using the canoe as the foreground. And uh, one last picture of this weird turtle with the long neck. Florida is such a crazy place. Nothing left to do but cast out, kick back, and ask you to subscribe to my Patreon. If you subscribe, that's going to keep this content coming. There's a lot of cool bonus stuff, too, with the different tiers on Patreon. So go check it out in the link below. And remember, climb high, dive deep, and rock on. We miss you, Space Cat. Won't you please come back home? We miss you, Space Cat. Won't you please come back home? And if you think we'll be mad, well, 